welcome to the Scholar Warrior podcast. Today I am with Ken Rosen, who's been on the show uh, two times before. And Ken Rosen is a highly experienced uh, acupuncturist and Chinese medical expert. And uh, every time we meet up, we, I certainly learn a great deal from Ken. And we're typically looking at one or two uh, topics. The last time we were talking about the, the 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 gut bag, the gut. Okay, so the gut, the intestines, and the stomach, and how that can affect your emotions and or your performance in general. And uh, so today, I'm really excited to be on on video for the first time because we've just been doing audio before, and in the log cabin in Ken's place in Bangkok, which is a very very special place to be. Um, it's quite amazing to walk off the street in Bangkok where it's all hectic and there's traffic and there's sound and noise and sweat and then to come into the log cabin, no sorry, the boat cabin. Thank you. The boat cabin, <laughs> uh, which is full of wood and it just, it feels very, very calm. You can see a, a, a Thai temple just next to, uh, next to the river there. But anyway, I've been rambling long enough. It's very, very good to be here and today we're going to tackle some big topics. Uh, so should we get into it? Yeah, the riverbed. Let's dive into the riverbed, right? Let's, let's dive into the riverbed. And the riverbed is the only thing I didn't have from last time that I really wanted to try to convey this time. So boom, right out of the gate, let's get into it, which is okay. the riverbed is everything that you sort of deposit in your system. Okay. Right? Thoughts, food, weather, all that stuff hmm. that deposits in your system. And you can call it clogged arteries or a headache later on, but it's, it's, it's congestion. And so these are, uh, we're, we're, you mentioned one of the big topics you want to kind of chat about today is pain. Mm. So this is, how, this is how pain can sort of start to manifest in the body by, by taking in f foods that congest our system, mm. cause inflammation, mm. or taking in stress and not being able to cleanse it. Mm. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the, there is no difference between the to the, the mental and physical realm, ultimately, you know, like, and, and so the location of a, a headache gives you information, and just mm -hmm. like words can create, cause congestion, right? right? Words cause congestion, mm -hmm. um, or they can cause flow, right? right? And, and, uh, and I'm just thinking about this one story that I, I did want to relate today, um, and it's the first time I've talked publicly about it, but it, it's just a story at this point, which a former student of mine was feeling my pulse. And as a Chinese medicine practitioner, you can get a lot of information from the pulse. Right? Right. Okay. So you can, you can tell someone's health condition quite accurately from the, from the condition of their pulse. Well, depending on, on how much experience you have, and you can, you, you get, you, you're listening to the pulsation of the heart, right? And the mind, right? Like, I mean, ultimately it's the heart and the mind. That you're listening so you're getting a lot of information mm -hmm. and this student of mine was feeling my pulse and and this is after traumatic brain injury and a, right. an emergency brain operation and yeah. some pe pretty serious recovery just physical stuff right so you were in hospital yeah i was out of hospital finally i'd oh. gotten back to bangkok and, and she she offered to do acupuncture on me to help heal me and she's feeling my pulse right and she says oh you're just surviving <laughs> And, and it wasn't until like the next night that it caught up with me. Mm. I was like, oh my God, mm. you know, I'm just surviving. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's been one of those, those things in my head, you know. And of course, if you're over 27, I hate to say it, but you're just surviving. You know what I mean? Like, you know, like you, you're, you've peaked in terms of enzymatic activity. You can do a lot to keep yourself healthy. Robin's in a testament to that. I keep working at it. You know, it, but it's... It's words like those that can sink in and cause mm. so much damage. Right. And, and it's, it's hard for me to talk publicly, and I don't mean to talk badly about this former student, mm. but it's a story now, and that's all it is. You know? But it, it, these things can cause pain, and real pain, right. words, yeah. relationships. And they can, I mean, they can affect your reality, right? If someone, so presumably someone says, you're barely hanging on. Yeah, exactly. Then your, your mind, your emotions are going to kind of fester and ruminate on that mm. and that's going to be difficult to recover or it's going to make it more difficult to recover i guess similarly if someone tells you you're you're unathletic 
or you know you're overweight or don't bother or it's pointless or these kind of things um, they can stop you from taking control of your health and recovery yeah I mean it, 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 was, it was the weird part about that story was this was after many hospitals and drilling into the head and you know waking up in a hospital and left limbs paralyzed and some pretty serious painful stuff mm. especially emotionally you know like it was when I had come back to Bangkok again and I was like you know she was there to help me she was there to support me mm. and then it was that one sentence oh you're just surviving you know while feeling the pulse that just like you know nestled into my subconscious and I'm, I'm really sort of happy to be able to talk about it today mm. actually because I, I feel like this is the final letting go of that and like charging forth mm. which is great so so how did you how did you re how did you overcome so obviously that plant is you know like a negative seed yeah, in there deep deep in yeah. there how did you shift it uh, my wife God bless her mm -hmm. uh, said can you do anything about it right mm. which is good advice can you do anything about it mm. and I've been regularly needing myself mm. uh, I wouldn't say for survival but to, for support you know mm. to, to, to prolong life and uh keep myself fit and healthy um, I, I you know it's sort of like ultimately what happened was you know when you wake up in the middle of the night with your heart in your chest and you're worried that you're just surviving you say to yourself oh okay you know like what can I do with this and you have to turn it into a lesson right and that's the thing with pain whether it be physical or mental or emotional pain that it's always there for a lesson it gets back to the um, the, the burning of the finger Mm. Um, my my neighbor Kaz just has a newborn over in Building uh, D, mm. and he he, you know the kid got his second hospital jab, mm. you know, and this time after the the kid really, uh, you know, really mm. reacted because it had learned from the first time that that was pain, right. you know, and associates everything that with pain and then, mm. uh, you know, so yeah, I think with those words you're just surviving. I I had to do a lot of work on myself. I had to talk. There's just a couple people about it, people mm -hmm. like my wife and, and, and whatnot. Um, and it was sort of like, you're just surviving? Okay, I'll show you just surviving. And I, I'll show you just thriving. Right. You know what I mean? Like, uh, and, and that's... Take up the challenge. Yeah, you have to... You ha exactly. If that's, if that's how you want to play it. And it mm. was just weird for me because it was such a long haul to get to that point. Mm. And then to have out of nowhere somebody that you thought you could really trust come in and be like, mm. ha ha. Mm. You know, like, you're hanging on, kid. Mm. you know so but it's a good lesson and it, it's hard to talk about it publicly but yeah I'm, I'm charging on I'm thriving on I'm enjoying every day every breath yeah and um, I think that I think I think your case study which is quite extraordinary how you over, you've overcome obviously uh, many major health challenges quite in quite an inspirational way if people go back and have a listen to the other podcasts they'll they'll learn a little bit about that um, but that's also a very empowering message for someone that's suffering as well, you know, or they've had a bad diagnosis, or mm. uh, and they're, they're trying to think of a way forward. And I remember one thing that you you told me one time, which really stuck with me, which is that when someone gets a diagnosis, um, if possible, it should be empowering. Mm, 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 mm. I really, I believe that yeah. strongly. So instead of you come and get this diagnosis and now the world's ended you know okay mm. see you later you know it's like this is what we've got and this is what we're working with and now this is what you can go away and do you know or, or this is what you can try and investigate mm. so that didn't happen in that case <laughs> in that case that did not happen it's it's um it's it's hard. Uh, it's it's uh, you know recovery is hard from whether it be back pain or, or brain surgery, you know, or heart surgery. You know, it's hard. But I think pain in general is is really about being you know resistant to what is. Hmm. So if you are waking up in a hospital bed, then once you get that information, what can you do with it? Hmm. You know, what did Teddy Roosevelt say? Do what you can with where you are. There's a third one. Do what you can where you are. I can't remember it. With the time you've got, sounds like. Uh, <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> Where you are, I can't remember the third one. But 
make the best of what is, you know what I mean? And that's why I think, you know, people that are in hospital beds or whatnot, there's an opportunity there. And, and uh, if, if somebody like myself can get through it and be helped by, by different modalities and, and just thinking in different ways, go for it, you know? And, and, and my, my history is incredible cancer three times or four times, you know, mm. heart surgery, brain surgery, you know, like mm. I've had all the major surgeries as the Iranian kid downstairs says, <laughs> I was like, you're right. Um, but at the best part about it is I'm still essentially me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and that, how wonderful is that, mm. you know, to celebrate that? Yeah. And, and, uh, I mean, you're very mobile. You're very, I mean, I've been watching uh, Ken train today and he's been showing me the way he moves and the, the you know, the, the ranges of motion that you've got and uh, his balancing on the Indo board, which everybody must own an Indo board. Maybe I'll show, I think Indo I'll... board, sponsor his podcast, yes. <laughs> sell more boards. It's a great tool. There'll be some Indo board at the beginning of this video. I'll stick it in there. It's very cool. So you are, I mean, you're in great, you're in good condition. I mean, you're in inspiring condition. So uh, let's talk about pain and obviously your perspective, is, well, is Western and Chinese perspective, I suppose, but mm. I suppose, but how do, how do traditional Chinese medical practitioners approach pain? Well, as a, as a general statement, they say, and I'm not even gonna try for the Chinese and I apologize to the viewers, but they, you know, they basically say where there's stagnation or congestion, there's pain. Mm. where there's no stagnation and no congestion there's no pain mm -hmm. yeah so so f f uh no flow pain mm. flow pain right flow uh, sorry <laughs> reversed yeah no flow pain. pain flow no pain no pain right yeah so how would that look in in someone's body that that covers up i mean that co that's a yeah, so that's the umbrella statement mm. so someone comes in uh with pain in the shoulder something's something's locked up something's not moving something's congested uh inflammation has started what is what does inflammation do is it, it stops movement well i think If we get back to this this idea, or maybe we haven't even mentioned it yet, but but congestion creates inflammation. Congestion creates inflammation. Congestion creates inflammation. So, and it can be mental congestion or just uh, food congestion, right? And then it gets back down to this riverbed where it's laying it down everywhere in, in the tubes, everywhere in the body. The little tubes and the big tubes, it's laying it down, it's laying it down, right? And it's getting rid of some of it. But it's mostly laying it down because it's like, ah, you know, like calcium, whatever it is. Um, and then that inflammation causes a, a, a heat, a hardening, a stress, mm -hmm. a weakening, a dehydrating. You know, it sort of it, it dries it, it. Things dry up. And, and that's why it's so important to really think about um, proactive hydration. Right. Okay, so this is um, people taking on uh, taking on too much of the wrong kind of food. This is this is gonna it's gonna start depositing, start blocking the flow. Blocking the, exactly blocking the flow and causing congestion and stagnation and, and then pain, right? Right. Okay. And you talked about shoulder pain, which that's the common one, office pain or whatever, right? right? And it's like. <laughs> It is hydration on a lot of levels, I would say, with, with, mm. with this sort of stuff, uh, rather than like office syndrome and people. It's really how you react to things, and it's like mm. getting into uh, like a lot of car accidents, which we, we already talked about, I think, with you. Right. But you're seeing it now, you know, like it's like even in your mind subconsciously, like, you know, and then all of a sudden things are up here and things aren't really hydrated and, and, and things need to be hydrated. But it's a gallbladder channel, right? right. Which is the edge of you, you know, like okay. it's. It's that, that, that spring energy, that morning time energy, like pew. So, so this is, so in this context, people are they're, they're potentially at work, they're receiving all these little bits of stress all through the day, tensing up, tensing mm. up, tensing up, tensing mm. up, not flowing. 
add that to another day, to a week, to a month, mm, mm, to mm. a year. Riverbed, then, riverbed, riverbed. Then we're to, like things are getting stuck. Things mm. are getting frozen. Dried out and frozen. Dried out and frozen. Yeah, yeah. So no S- flow. Stiff, rigid. Then inflammation. And inflammation. Yeah. And yeah. pain. And there's two types of pain, just to get the idea to to your viewers, um, which is um, excess and deficient pain, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and excess would be like acute or really, you know, strong pain that's really inflammatory mm. that, that if you touch it out, mm. you know, and then more deficient chronic pain, which is like over time or whatnot was like, oh, you know, push that point on the back. It feels nice when you push on that. That's that would the be aching. the big difference. Yeah, the eighth, right. the, the sore or the eighth, you know, rather than the inflammatory pain. Right. Yeah. So the the, the def- the, the aching pain that's kind of deficiency aching pain is deficiency exactly mm-hmm. yeah it's it's a, it's more of a weakness rather than a, than a, a, like a um a block on a channel that's inflammatory or something oh, okay. the, the main key would be excess pain when you push on it it hurts too much and you mm-hmm. got to go soft right it's a release it needs to release and it could be wind and heat behind there or something mm. or it's a, a deficient pain, which is like, ah, oh, it feels good when you like, mm. you sink into it and you're like, oh yeah, that's good, you know? And, and afterwards you feel better because you're sort of pushing the blood and chi into that area gently to sort of charge the battery, eventually. Whereas the other one, it's like opening a window and, and letting out the wind and the heat or the inflammation. Right, right. Let it out. Yeah, let it out. Let it, let it out. Let it go. Let it go. Okay. Very, very common form of pain that most many people report. Lower back pain. Mm. Lower back pain. Is this uh, the, the, the kind of epidemic of lower back pain in the West? Strangely, in, in squatting cultures, they have much, 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 much lower incidences of uh, lower back pain. Uh, cultures that spend their time squatting on the floor India and China and these mm. places uh, what what is going on with, with the back pain thing is it, uh, is it postural is it something else is that deficiency is that deficiency if, something's, if the lower back is aching uh, lower back always generally relates to, to kidney mm generally it just says the ears and the head hair and, and all that sort of stuff um, but that kind of achy back pain that's relieved by pressing though would definitely be kidney deficiency for sure okay. for sure but in clinical practice I find because the gallbladder channel is so antsy in this day and age that we're all so at edge you know with office syndrome that that a lot of that back pain can go from the gallbladder, which is the edge of the body, to to the back, you know, and it looks like it looks like kidney, but it could be more gallbladder. Okay. Um, and I generally treat both channels when when I do uh, back pain like that, but rarely a needle in the back. Right. right. Yeah. So, and this is what many people expect when they come and get acupuncture. I think you've mentioned this before. My back hurts, like, and they expect you, expect you to stick some needles in their back. Mm. Right. But. It could be something unrelated to that specific area that is then manifesting that problem. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it really gets down to the riverbed or the irrigation behind the riverbed not flowing, right? So by needling the, the legs, you're able to help that flow again. You're able to help that flow. Right. Yeah. It's a good. Why? This is one thing that really interests me. And that is, why do some people feel pain and some people don't? Uh, and uh, for the same issue. Uh, so what I mean is, this is what I found interesting when I was looking at back pain, is that if you do, if you scan like a hundred people mm. walking around on the street, say of London, mm. I think something like 30 or 40% of them will have slipped discs and discs that are out. But um, the percentage that report pain will be about 15%. Mm. 
So there's there's people walking around with with discs that are out of place and don't report any pain whatsoever. And then there's people that do have discs that are then feeling pain. What yeah? What is going on in in, in these contexts? I think very simply that the structural damage does not correlate well to pain. Right. It doesn't. Just period. Right. You know, I, I don't know how many times I've I've treated people with this, that, and the other thing, and it's just being like, okay, this is, I got to plug in your kidney, or I got to relieve the gallbladder, you know, whatever it is, and then energetically your body knows how to recalculate the irrigation for the riverbed, the energetic irrigation, and it lights up and and, and plugs into the system. Right. You know, which is which is nothing short of amazing like you know like and i've been doing this 20 years and i'm 20 times more impressed with putting a needle in somebody yeah. which is a pretty incredible so 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 it, the, the pain could be more related to how tears fly than yeah. to then then to the actual physical condition of the the body as yeah, well. yeah 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 but if it's sort of a chronic thing right you know, I mean, even if you go up, up higher up, you know, in the middle of the back, that's more liver gallbladder when it's more in the middle of the back. But low back is more a kidney. Right. And that that sort of achy week that you experience, especially as you get older. Right. Um, you know, you do. You get weaker kidneys. So you got to figure out ways to charge them, mm. you know, figure out ways to charge them. And um, kidneys are connected to gene. Pre prenatal gene. Yeah, kidneys are your batteries. You know, they're, so they're, 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 they're the raw energy that you're born. They're with. the pilot light. Right. You know what I mean to help steam everything through your body. Mm. It's that pilot light that's that's continually like flickering. You know, and if you change your breath or this or that or your your training or you know, mm. you're able to get those kidneys really flicking. You know, and I use that analogy of. Uh, like Christmas tree lights, you know, because all those little connective, um, sorry, not connective, uh, arterial blood supply in the kidneys and those little bean glands down here, you know, that house the adrenaline. And they have to do with, with the will, you know, and the will to survive and like, you know, and the, uh, the ability to charge the battery and then discharge it at a, at a healthy rate, mm. right? That's the key part with the kidney. And you discharge them as well. Well, you, it's, yeah, but it's like, it's sort of like that thing of like, how often you should have sex as you get older, all that sort of stuff, right. you know, it's how you're able to charge those batteries is important, mm. but how you're able to discharge them at a really good pace is really the key right. to, the, to the longevity program. Right, and the kidneys are connected to sexual... Prow, not prowess, but function. Yeah, will, right? Will. It gets back to will, basic right. will, like primal will, mm -hmm. you know, like... It, they talk about it in Chinese medicine as sort of like a computer, mm. you know, because it's tied to the brain, of course, the kidney and the brain. And that pituitary adrenal axis that goes, you know, down, uh -huh. that, that, that microcosmic orbit, which I keep on reminding myself to push the breath down into the kidneys to help them light up. A lot of times books and stuff will do the opposite way, but I like, I like pushing the breath down. Like so uh, just for context for people that don't know, maybe the, the, the jargon, the small universal chi flow is the Ren and Du meridians. Mm. Yeah, which are the conception... Conception, conception. vessel and then the, 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 the governor vessel or what are they called? Governor vessel. So up the front and then yeah. down the back. And then down through the taint. Through the tank, <laughs> yeah, microcosmic yeah, orbit, yeah, yeah. The microcosmic orbit. So this is the this is uh, one of the primary ways that chi moves around the, around the, around the body, right? So the pituitary gland and the and the kidneys. Yeah, the adrenal. This, the adrenal's like the kidney yang, right? It's like the pilot light. It's like mm. sexual, you know. It's uh, survival, uh, all that stuff, and it's like you know, and it's and it's it's going on all the time, and it's that 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 spark that's underneath this big cooking pot, you know, like of, of stuff, this jug, this, this, um, this gut bag, you know, and it's that kidney energy. That's the will that, that is all about, we were talking about pain, but it's all about will and survival and storage, mm. battery, computer, brain, you know, like all that stuff thinking, not thinking in like reflection sort of thing. Like, thinking uh like a computer so having energy to think 
No, that's more digestion. Let's not go down there. <laughs> we did that last time, right? We talked about worry and, and digestion quite a bit. Mm. So, any tips for reducing inflammation? Yeah, I, I, I think the main thing is the breath. Right. right. And then the second thing would be uh, praying and meditating. Mm. Number one, you know, whatever, whatever that means to you. And that could be training, right? I don't mean to differentiate those things either. Um, but certainly whole food, okay. right? Um, uh, you want to sort of, you want to clean out the riverbed mm. because the, the, as much of the riverbed that you can empty out and get rid of the silt that you've accumulated from, in my case, too much uh, mint chocolate chip ice cream. You know, uh, and pizza and bagels, but you know, <laughs> but but really the mint chocolate chip did it to me. Um, <clears throat> that was my riverbed, you know what I mean. And I've had to get some pitchforks in there and sort of and 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 do it. And mostly it's been through good exercise, yeah, which I do a lot of swimming. I do a lot of uh, a small space fitness now, which I hope we can talk about. And then also um, uh, cooking and nourishment at home, like like you know, very simple food. So. Yeah, I've been la I've been lucky to come and uh, spend time with Ken a couple of times, and and what you do with food is, is really impressive. So the food is always very 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 nutritious. I guess mostly kind of Thai influenced, but not always, and it always tastes good. And it's mostly vegetarian. It's mm. mostly vegetarian. Mm. Mostly vegetarian. So you really, really worked on sort of clean, building this kind of really nutritious, cleansing, but tasty diet, mm. which is really, it's unique. I don't know many other people doing that. Of course, I know people that are going, you know, vegan and, and this kind of, but really spending so much time to make stuff really delicious and changing these kind of Thai Asian dishes in your own way and then being really sort of satisfied in, mm. in in the production of it it's almost like training when you're yeah it's, it's, you're it's poetry thank you it's, it's poetry and uh it tastes so bloody good <laughs> it tastes thank so you. good but it's clearly working for you it's clearly clearing things out and and the quality of those nutrients are, as we've talked about before they affect your thinking the quality mm, of your mm, thinking mm, mm, mm. so it's so it's working really well. So, so this is a major way that people can to, can, can reduce inflammation mm. uh, is is to get control of their diet and whole foods, mm. more vegetables. Yeah, a lot more vegetables, high fiber, low calorie. Yeah, like I want people to feel full, mm. but mm. they gotta put they gotta lay down that fiber and get to get that fiber to like pitchfork. Mm. out the uh, intestinal splatter mm. muck like, out yeah the muck exactly you gotta muck you gotta muck, <laughs> you gotta it muck out. out something like this but you, you gotta but and also just sort of you know moving the gut more i would say mm. is a good idea and and then um yeah meditating and praying on some level or some training where you're 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 you're, you're not looking outside of yourself for your problems that you're 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 sort of facing that that glorious hall in yourself so what does that do, by a lot, by you know, physiologically? Of course, I mean, I, I I meditate and I I, I do, you know, uh, introspective kind of practices. I, I benefit from them immensely. But physiologically, what does it do? How does it affect the inflammation? Is it the parasympathetic nervous system? Yeah. Is that what it's all about? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Sympathetic is like, you know, run from the tiger in the woods, like gallbladder, oh my God, like I got a bad email, you know, like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, alpha syndrome, I don't know what to do, you know, windy, 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 windy and heat. Um, and this is not, this is mm -hmm. like... This decompressing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you think about all those, I, I don't know if I've, I've said this on your show, but I, I'll say it today because it, it's worth it. This, this cardiologist, uh, Cosmic Heart, mm. Cosmic Heart, you can search for it. Cosmic Heart Cowan, Dr. Cowan, I believe. He said that the tubes inside of you, if you were to string all of them together, the big ones, the tiny, tiny ones, all of them, they would go around the planet three times. Okay. Like, if it went from here to London, I'd yeah. be, be, you impressed. know, like, whoa, you yeah. know, like, and he even says, okay, say it goes around one time, you know, yeah. like, 
we're talking about a massive surface area. Yeah. Massive surface area. And if you spread it out on a football field, it would like the, the blood would cover the whole football field. Okay. Like it's 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 an incredible so all those tubes, right? The separation between the gut and the head and the and the heart, mm. it's all an illusion, right? right. Um, so the more that you can sort of get those tubes either warmed up and motivated and activated, you mm. know, and really be in your body or, you know, resting and relaxing and, and re relaxing all those tubes. Yeah. It's going it's, it's it's to reduce the inflammation. It's going to reduce inflammation. But you, you, it, it helps to sort of help clean out the gut bag. You know, it helps to sort of do a spring cleansing or fall cleansing um, something where you're you're getting in that riverbed and, and, and getting rid of the stuff. And having a muck out. A muck out. But even the, the muck out's like the big one, right? Like right. that's the one that's been, the, the riverbed that's been building up for a while. And, you know, you may be squeezing one out in the morning, which is fine. But that's just like, you know, the top of the riverbed. Right. You know, right. generally speaking. Right. There's, generally. There's, there's more in there. There's more in there. Yeah, yeah. Especially as the organs build up fat and inflammation and cholesterol and blah, 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 blah. It calcium as it, it builds up all that stuff, it hardens and dries out, right? Mm. You know, and and you build up more inflammation mm. because of both that hardening, which is like a deficiency, like the the water in the little tube is you know lacking on some level, or um, it's an excess where it's really painful. Right. So there's some biggies there that people can jump onto and tuck into, and. Uh, <laughs> They are meditate, meditate some form of kind of introspective meditation, the diet, the whole foods, the vegetables, uh, the nourishment, and movement. Mm. Was that right? Mm. Movement was in there, which poetically leads us on to uh, small space fitness. I wish there was a sexier name, but you know what? I small think small space fitness. Small space fitness is is really. Perfect. I think it's good for, for where we're at in the world and um, we can all find a small space. And this is what you're sinking your teeth into. This has been my focus for myself. Yeah. Because I find myself on a bus or an airplane or in a waiting room or a hospital waiting room or even, God forbid, a hospital bed, yeah. you know, like, but, you know, we find ourselves in these places. So then what can we do in these small spaces? Mm. To make the best of it and to, to get ourselves out of there so we can go enjoy the great outdoors you know? yeah so so yeah so, and uh, this is one thing when I I work with Qigong clients and um, I'm teaching them how to you know build this habit which obviously delivers lots of benefits uh, and to make it accessible and uh, Qigong is something you can do behind a desk mm. it doesn't always have to be a, a profound experience you know we experience chi flow or higher states of mm. consciousness it just can just be swinging your arms around behind a desk mm -hmm. or like you're doing now mm. the spine the spine twist the spine right? twist and it's just a seated spine twist mm -hmm. but i'm grabbing with this knee right and then the more i i tuck in mm -hmm. right into the gut and i, I learn to tighten up the gut in this position yeah. The more I realize that, you know, that football field or going around the planet three times mm. is right in me. And that this twist, if I'm well hydrated and well nourished and, and mentally well, you know, well adjusted, I can use this position to access that infinity in me. So you're also doing abdominal breathing now yeah and that that will say a few times today you want to breathe into the belly so the belly expands mm. and then as you exhale you're pulling in on the belly yeah. right and then you really want to push the breath down into the kidneys right while pulling in on the gut bag pulling in so for those people that are thinking that exercise is uh, something they're going to need to uh, schedule some time for. I mean, someone could sit in a, in an office chair and do that. Exactly. They don't have to sit cross-legged on a sofa. Oh, and you feel better instantly. Right. You know, like, like it's like okay, you're like, like I was able to charge a battery for a millisecond. Right. But the millisecond on the subway or on the plane or wherever it is, 
is good. Office chair is a good one, you know, like yeah. even if it's just I'll get into the office chair position, I can do that, I hope. Yeah. So office chair position, even if it's just putting the arm between the le legs like this mm -hmm. and then twisting like this, but then you got to focus on the gut. Right. And so you're pulling in on the belly as you exhale. So you you see now his belly is moving inwards and then out. And you never stop trying to go up mm. and you never stop trying to go down, right? But it's an opportunity to, to, cause it's gonna help the whole gallbladder channel, right? All the fright and the wind and the gallbladder. And then it's also an opportunity to really work on the gut pulling in on the gut and people want to be toned, right? Yeah. People want to be fit for their frame and people beat themselves up. I didn't go to the gym. I didn't go to yoga or whatever else. It's all around us, whether it be on a subway or a plane or uh, an office chair. And if, if it's two minutes, you know, that you're taking in between emails, you know, mm -hmm. that you can do something like that. Forward bend is particularly good. And we'll, if we can just go over it. Yeah. So forward bending when you're, when you're standing, right, is simple, right? Yeah. Forward bending when you're sitting is really important because you don't need a big space at all. So you're, you're letting yourself sink down. You're letting yourself sink down and you're not trying to stretch. You're just letting your body do it. Hmm. So you're breathing into the belly. So your belly's expanding as you inhale. And then as you exhale, you're pushing the breath down into the kidneys. And you want to look at my back, if you can see the back, relax on the exhale. So breathing in. So you're still doing the abdominal breathing. Yeah. Yeah. And this is going to be massaging your internal organs as well. Yeah, you're going to help the, the movement of everything through the, through the bags, you know, and the pipes and stuff. But you really want to focus on the four corners of the gut in terms of pulling in. And in different positions, you can focus on the four corners of those guts. So if you sit there, maybe you can... I'm not sure you're going to be in, in shot there all the time. Maybe you could just show what you mean when you say these four corners. Well, I mean, it's, there's many corners. There's, you know, there's, there's at least two lines here, right, and two mm -hmm. lines here. But these two lines here, right next to the belly button, are the main one. And I'm just going for four corners, right? right underneath the rib and then right next to the belly button yeah i'm simplifying it you yeah. know but of course it's an infinity and there's there's many many little connections in there yeah and they're finding that the squiggles in the gut all those squiggles in the gut are direct reflection of the squiggles in the brain right so if the squiggles in the gut are in order and all the little places where uh inflammation can hide and, and the riverbed has buried you know the muck um you're able to to uh, cleanse it. So you were showing me a picture earlier, which uh, demonstrates uh, how the how the gut moves in our abdominal breathing. Could we can we see your gut move there? I don't know if it can, but let's see. Yep, fills up and then it deflates like a balloon. Yeah. So that kind of, this kind of training, where people are increasing the blood flow around their internal organs, they can do that anywhere. Yeah, they can do it anywhere and you can strengthen it. You're strengthening all those little connective tissue uh, mm. connections and muscle connections. Mm. And then of course these organs become deflated and stagnant and congested and inflamed and tight or dry, mm. all these things. So the more you can sort of work on on these kind of breathing techniques um, that you can do anywhere you know that you're gonna tighten up your gut mm. and I think we all want that as we age yeah. I mean I certainly want a tight gut yeah I age. And you want some control over your your gut and you wanna you wanna keep things moving in there flowing and and the study of the study of medicine in the future is really two things right inflammation yeah right that's the study of medicine mm. and the gut that's the thing and 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 they're showing that things like Alzheimer's and dementia that the riverbed gets really pretty toxic for a long time and then all of a sudden you get a little dingy in the head mm. you know what I mean yeah, like yeah. I and it, and, but it's those squiggles yeah those squiggles are a direct reflection so if this is your center right yeah. which 
this is your center, your Dan Tien. Mm. This is not your center. People like to think about this as your center, yeah. but this is your center. Mm. This is where you have the most strength until, you know, you're done. Right. You know what I mean? So if you're in a hospital bed just sitting in one position, you know, not enjoying life, the more you can work on, on getting this strength here as a motivator and controller, the, the better. Mm. The better. So that was another um, little nugget that we had earlier before we, we came on the camera where you, you were discussing all the places that you could do some form of training, some form of, of movement. Obviously, you can do it when you're standing. Mm. You can do it on the floor. You can do it when you're, when you're sitting. Mm. So this is useful for people to know. Even when they're sitting, they can, they can do this. You also mentioned there's, there's good stuff people could do if they're lying on a bed in a hospital. There's ways that they could move just to get things moving. Mm. Um, I mean, we might not be able to uh, you know, show that stuff I'm not sure. I don't, I'm not sure you'd be in frame, but uh, it, that is empowering that people can start to move wherever they are. Exactly. And they can start to get some kind of benefit. I um, I had a client at a spa here in Thailand many years ago, and she had just had, I think, a major knee thing. Major, mm. major, 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 major knee thing. And she was she was getting up, and mm. it was, you know, it was all this. I said, just focus on leading from here. Yeah. And then when you walk, it's like somebody's pulling a string. Mm. That you're, you know, you're feeling the floor rather than, than, than trying to, oh, I'm going to get to my destination. That it's really mindful, right? Mm. That's the bottom line. But it's this control from your Dantian that, mm. that I think is really empowering. And we all want to be fit for our frame and tighten our gut until we go we don't want to be rotting in a hospital bed god forbid no we do not no and if you're in a hospital bed i don't know if this will come up but i'll do it while we're here but i think he has some b footage of it so you're in a hospital bed right it's no fun i know just twist your knees over like this <sighs> hopefully you're in, hopefully you're in frame but we can see that you're still breathing from your belly <sighs> And your belly is rising and falling, and, and your knees are over to one side. And I'm pinning this knee. I'm really pinning it. So you should be feeling that your your lumbar's opening up. I guess. I feel it mostly here. Okay. And then your arms are over the top of your head, so you can move that as well. Yep. But this is just the simplest twist, mm. you know. But but you have to combine the breath. Mm. You have to you have to combine the breath. Where you're breathing into the belly and then pulling in on the belly button as you exhale. Focusing on the four corners of the bag down there for, you know, better toning. Yeah. Yeah. So anywhere. Anywhere, yeah. That's, that's the idea of talking today that I've been thinking about. Anywhere is training. Uh, yeah, and even if, and, and when I say small space fitness, I don't just mean like it could be a small space of time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like these little moments that we have on the subway or, you know, in a hospital or in a hospital waiting room or um, at home while cleaning. You yeah. know, while Ken, at home. Ken was <laughs> showing me. This is going to sound a bit strange. I know, it, it <laughs> he is. Was, but he, he was in a shower, but the movements he was, he had his clothes on. And he was showing me in the shower how he could... It, to me, it looked like Qigong. Mm. You know, you're extending up and then you're making these big ranges of movement and then you're hinging at the waist. So even, you know, as you're cleaning your house, you can be training if you know, if you know how to move correctly. Yeah, watch your head. But, uh, you know, it's an opportunity to breathe. It's all an opportunity to mm. breathe differently and tighten up the gut. Yeah. But you got to start pulling in on the gut. Mm. Your gut's not going to pull in on its own accord. Mm. And if you can combine the breath where you're, you're, you're breathing in on the gut, and it's like a wet rag that you're, you're rinsing out, and there's a mm. lot in there to rinse out. You know, you can keep tightening it up. Mm. Um, as long as you're breathing into the gut and you're pushing the, the breath down the back into the kidneys, right? And then you can even combine it like this, right? Where it's up, up, up. And this is a small space anywhere. But it's an infinity. But you gotta combine the breath, breathing into the belly 
and then down the back. Into the belly, and then down the back. And when your head is lower than your knees, obviously it gets quite red, which, uh, you know, it's interesting, why not? And um, it's, it's getting that, that flow going between the ren and the do, that microcosmic orbit, right? And if you can focus the energy going into the kidneys, I think that's one of those keyholes to sort of, uh, you know, eternity in a way, you know, because the, the kidneys are about your genetics and mm -hmm. your computer program and all that stuff. So keep them flowing. Keep charging the batteries. Keep charging the batteries. Yeah, yeah. Keep your computer functioning well. Do you think there's any particular forms of exercise that are well suited for small space fitness? Of course, we know Qigong is the uh, is is suitable. Well, you're, you seem you're using a few yo quite a few yoga movements as well. Yeah, yoga has been sort of my thing over the years for many years, but but. Um, I, I think you know once you start drawing distinctions it gets it gets it gets difficult um, and and that's why small space fitness I want to just focus on mental and and and, and uh, physical fitness you know like I, um, I don't want to just think about it as something uh, like oh I, you know, like, yeah, it's it's not it's not me anymore um, but you know I find myself in this apartment a lot which is okay and I think most people these days do you know yeah. city dwellers but it's my home and I love it, you know, and I love being here and you can do so much in a small space. Yeah. Um, it's not an excuse that you don't have like enough money to afford the gym membership. I right. think that's that's silly thinking. And I'll, I'll, I'll have you know that um, one of the ways this came up was uh, my wife's cousin, Bew, right? Mm -hmm. He was like, yeah, Ken, that, that's really cool. All that stuff you're doing. That's really interesting stuff. Uh, when I have some free time, I'll... Uh, I'll think about doing it. Yeah. And I was like, no, 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 that's it. You know, it's on the subway. You know, it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's in the airport waiting room. You know, it's, it's where you're able to, and it, as long as you're keying in that breath, where you're pushing the breath down, pushing the breath down, pushing the breath down, you're charging the ba those batteries and you're strengthening your back. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's not about having some free time. No, it's not about, you know, rec rec recreation is recreation. Mm. You know, you're recreating yourself. So we we all have times, even when you're crowded into a subway car, yeah. people, you know, you can do that abdominal breathing and you can you can work on the breath and you can calm the mind. You can let go of the eyes, relax the eyes and be at a state of rest, right? Mm. All the tubes that are so tight and all the, the muscles that are dry or tight, you know, can relax, you know, all those accidents that you got into, you know, in your mind during the day will come down. The sympathetic will slow down and the parasympathetic will, will speed up, Right. you know, it'll become more balanced. The yin will become greater and the yang will become right. more. The tubes are a good image. I like that idea of, you know, all those tubes relaxing, you know, everywhere. Because when you think about it, even in the lungs, all the little tubes in the lungs, you know, like, all, everything relaxing you know yeah. it's it's a powerful image like a riverbed that just has a not you know the right amount of flow in it or something yeah and so people can be doing that on a train on the way back from work they can be sat there with their feet flat on the ground they can be breathing doing abdominal breathing they can be gently shifting turning bending twisting, yeah, twisting. stretching twisting and toning yeah flowing Blowing, yeah, twisting, toning, and blowing. They could be training anywhere. This is this is uh, reminds me of my first uh, Tai Chi uh, teacher in Beijing, who w wherever I was, he would kind of hit me and nudge me and s start making me do Dantian breathing on the bus. Or uh, yeah, great. That's you know, yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, he'd be like, "It's training time," and then I'd have to, I'd close my eyes, gen or just gently half close, start Dantian breathing. It's like, okay, good. We got 15 minutes before we get to where we're going. So now you've got 15 minutes training time. Yeah, and that's, and that's, if that's like, that gets back to comparing and, and resistance to what is, right? Mm. You know, like if you're, if you're, if you're on the way somewhere, say work or something, and, and you're not using that time for interior growth, mm. you know, then you're complaining, really. Mm. You know, you're not at peace. So you can find that time to say, okay, 
I can do a couple breaths, five breaths, and then I can just let my breath go again. Yeah. Um, favorite move that you're that you've been experimenting with recently in your small space space fitness. Oh, the favorite move. All right. Your favorite let's, move. Let's oh, you're gonna show us. I might as well. Right? Why not? Well. Yeah. If right, you if done. you come towards this way, you'll be really in the. Well, I mean, short the, I mean, you can do this anywhere, right? But yeah. I just like laying on my arm. Mm. Laying on my shoulder. Yep. And then putting the arm up. And I have been combining this with a the breath these days. So as the arm goes back, I'm pulling up on the on the gut gut bag. Okay. So still abdominal breathing. Yeah. And some rotation. And it's just something I can do anywhere, yeah. you know, like, and, and, and even it's, it's sort of, oh, this side's so much tighter. And of course you can see with the lower arm, I'm pushing now, mm. you know, okay. and then I'm starting to move this arm, but first I'm moving this arm to help open up this side. <sighs> yeah. And then I do like the, the spinal twists and then I, I like the, the half moon stuff. Yeah. Certainly, I like the half moon stuff, but the laying on the arm seems to be the thing that I, I because I can do that even on like on a bus or something, you know, or like yeah. you know, and just sort of relax, which is nice. Those are some good ones. Those are some class ones. So you can do those sitting. More accessible. Yeah, everybody should be able to do that stuff, you know, whether it's a you know the office stuff where it's just this or or, or mm. thing, or the um, the sawadee, which my yoga teacher taught me. Which is, you know, you can do this mm. at any office or even on a subway. But then, then once you're in it, once you're in it, you want to work on getting into it and mm. pulling it on the gut. And then you can get more twists. You must be properly hydrated, though. You want to be really proactively hydrated because you're, you're, you're moving your intestines, you're toning your intestines. You're, 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 you're hydrating your tubes. Your tubes are all going to be working. Mm. It's not like you have one heart, right? You have like a, a gazillion hearts all around the body because all the tubes have a little muscle layer in them and a mm. water layer in there, there. And they're all, all the little tiny, tiny, tiny ones and the bigger ones and everything else. So they're all pumping. Mm. It's like a, 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 you know, a gazillion hearts. Those are some very good moves for people to be using. Um, any other comments on small space fitness? Well, just the idea that anything where you're standing in a small space is the realm of heaven. It's about, and I don't know if I'm out, I probably your, am. Your head's probably out. Okay, so anything where you're standing. We'll imagine you're standing. Yeah, so it's, I'll stand, it's okay. I'll stand. Anything where you're standing is the realm of heaven. It's about heart and balance and future a little bit more, right? right because you're moving somewhere, right? Or you're standing still. And even if it's in a small space, I'm a big fan of standing horse, okay. which um, you could do any number of things with, you know, you could do any number of things with standing horse. And that's the realm of heaven, which is stimulation. Sitting is about man, which is about reflection, mm -hmm. you know, and this is at the dinner table or anywhere now. really now, exactly, mm -hmm. we're reflecting on things. And then anything where you're laying down is the realm of earth, right. which is the most, <laughs> vegetative and relaxed it's nice and I feel all my tubes like instantly relax when I'm down you know what I mean like everything's just like yeah. so it's good you know I mean this is this is the earth part of this is probably the one I've been doing the most hmm. you know so when, when I'm in when I'm when I'm on a bed or whatever else I'm working on toning hmm. this yeah and just relaxing hmm. If I'm not sleeping, just relaxing. Very good. So the standing realm is... Standing realm is heaven, heart. Heaven, heart. Yeah. And more... And balance. And this is tennis, mm. right? This is, a, this is qigong. This is, you know, anything standing in yoga. Mm. It's anything. It's, it's, it's the world. Because when you stand up, you're closer to heaven. You know, your, your head is closer to heaven. Mm. And your brain is representative of heaven in you. Mm. The house of the clear young. 
and sitting. Sitting is man, which is about reflection. And lying down. Lying down is earth, which is about vegetation. Vegetation. And rest. Right. Same thing. Yeah. And so if, you, if you're in a particular state, one of those may be more, more useful than another. Obviously, if you're tired, you probably want to lay down. Exactly, yeah, but sometimes people need to be in heaven more and they'd be like, okay, kick in the butt, like get going, you know, like get walking, you know, right. and walking's great for both sides of the brain, mm -hmm. you know, but it's stimulative to the heart and the mind, you know, um, sitting is the one that I've gotten, you know, my legs are weaker since the, the brain operation, but you know, I'm still pretty good, yeah. but um, I, I think uh, sitting is the one that I'm getting in more into now because you can just do so much stuff in, yeah. in this, this funny little realm, you know, yeah. like of just sitting. And I have this beautiful place to be in, in the world, certainly, which doesn't hurt. And you don't have to worry about falling over. No, no, because, because heaven, like. heaven, when you come down from heaven, right, when you're, when you're in the state of man, it's somewhere between heaven and earth. So it's not yeah. totally vegetative. Hmm. But it's not totally stimulating, and that's the idea that it's more reflective, and that's why I try to emphasize twists mm. because it's reflective. Mm. Uh, the realm of man is reflective, mm. and more about the past. Right? And this big saying in yoga is, "You're only as young as your spine," and I think that's very true. You know, yeah. those connections between the head and the spine and all the way down are all you have. Yeah. It's that's, big in Taoist Qigong as well. Yeah, and that's why focusing on getting the, the, the cascade of energy to go down and light up those kidneys and make them glow is something that's going to help keep your charge and keep you really healthy. Very cool. I talk very, a lot. Very cool. A Sorry, lot, Jake. a lot. It doesn't have to, but this is why we're here. I know, I know, I know. I'm just we're here the first time on video. I'm a little shy, kids. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's... Wow, there's a lot of food for thought there, um, uh, particularly on pain. I mean, and, and there's concrete stuff for people to be acting on. They want to reduce inflammation. They want to reduce pain. Then we've got you know, meditation, some kind of internal practice, uh, cleaning up the diet. And we've mentioned what kind of things they, they, they sh could be looking at. And exercise, some kind of flowing exercise which includes abdominal breathing, mm. correct? Now, we talk, now we've, we've finished talking about small space fitness. Mm. They can do that standing, they can do that sitting, they can do it laying down. Mm. There isn't a special time to do it. You can do it in a small space of time. You can do it in a small space of time. All the time is time to do it. Mm. Train, uh, you know, cleaning the table, uh, cleaning the shower. Um, it's not training for some future event right. like when you arrive and you're like yeah I'm mm. in balance like you're, <laughs> a, you're actively you're actively doing it you mm. know like you're actively mm. always working on it and mm. yeah you might have some back pain or whatever and that mm. might be you need to rest more right. you know right. or you might have some shoulder pain and you need to relax more mm. you know it's uh, one of the main things I've seen with pain is that the people get upper excess mm. and dried out and lower deficiency right that the batteries aren't able to charge like they used mm. to you know and that you're 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 weaker down here mm. so that's why the, the kidney breath is really important mm. and then up here gets um fibrotic and dried out and mm. a lot of emotional fright and stagnation mm. so you have to like let go of that anxiety and that fright and that uh stagnation and, and relax one thing we didn't mentioned was this idea that that in Chinese medicine earth and water have this relationship mm -hmm. and water is your kidneys your will your computer your sex drive all that stuff it's your your drive to reproduce all that stuff it's your kidneys and your earth is your digestion and your cooking pot mm -hmm. right and it's your maybe your propensity to worry you know or mm -hmm. overthink mm -hmm. right <clears throat> so if you can, earth over controls water, controls water, I forget the exact terminology, but your, your, the strength of your core, your dantian on the front, will determine how strong your back is. Mm. And a lot of times people with deficient back pain have a very weak core. Right. Yeah. So doing things like the Indo board or standing horse or qigong or yoga, anything where you're focusing on the core, which is what everybody's doing anyway, it seems yeah. like, right? Yeah. Right, kids? 
Everyone's talking about the core now. Is this exercise engaging my core now? Enga- engaging <laughs> the core, I know. Yeah. I like gut. I like saying yeah. gut a little bit more. I'm trying to popularize gut. So if you're out there, say gut, not core. It feels better. Very cool. Any last, uh, any words p- for the viewers, listeners, before we close? You know, I think this idea of mate, you know, instead of like, you know, enjoy where you are you're always going to be on on your way somewhere so you know get into that flow right where you're at and this idea that you know pain is pain is uh subjective and perspective hmm. you know i mean uh when i did this um lecture about pain at the oriental hotel here in town one of the one of the slides showed both christ which is a painful image you know on the cross hmm. and also buddha which said uh something like you know Pain is inevitable, but suffering is optional. Right. So the more that you can be at peace with what is in your life, the more that you're going to be bringing in the good. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And that can be on the subway or you know in the bathroom or wherever it is. The more you can find that peace uh, right in that moment is really a keyhole to, I think, uh, the big flow, mm-hmm. which is what I think we all want, which is the big flow. Which, you know what? We're all on it anyway, and I'm looking at flow out the window here. Yeah. It's pretty nice. There's a river. There's, it's quite hard not to look at that uh, river and uh, and temple. I'll take a, I'll take some pictures of it and I'll stick it in uh, in this video. Ken, thank you so much. It's been an absolute joy. Blabbermouth, but it was fun. It's been an absolute joy and a pleasure as always. And uh, there's a lot to uh, to masticate mm. in here. So thanks a lot. Thank you. Cup and a cup. Cup. Cup and cup. Thank you so much, cup. (laughs)